This video is supported by Translatebox. So far in the series we have talked about different aspects of Haskell. Yet we have never really talked about how to build a whole project or library. Yes, we've talked about compilation, but we haven't talked about the build tools. And that's what we are going to do in this video. We are going to talk about the Haskell Cabal, which is the common architecture for building applications and libraries. Cabal is not just a build tool. It will help us to uh, install and also update packages and to manage different versions for our dependencies. Okay, so installing Cabal obviously uh, depends on the system you're using. If you're on Ubuntu, for example, a simple uh, package install via APT is sufficient. On Windows 10, it might be a bit uh, more tricky. You could either use a package manager there or you could do it my way, which would be to install Stack, which is another application, then download the Cabal executable and then add Cabal and GHC to your path. Well, of course, there are different ways of installing the software, and that is why I have linked to resources down below in the video description. After installing Cabal, you should check that everything is in order. You do that, for example, on Windows in your CMD. On Linux, you do it in whatever shell you are using, and you're just trying to print the version of Cabal and GHC. Both should show up. If nothing shows up, then something has gone wrong in your installation process. After everything is installed, you should first call Cabal Update. This will basically update the repository information for Cabal. After that is done, we can finally start building our first project. Okay, so here we are in an empty directory called MyDemo. And here we can see the contents of this directory. It's empty. And we can see the CMD pointing to that directory. Uh, of course, if you're on another operating system, you wouldn't have a CMD, you would have some, some other shell, but I'm on Windows here. And I do that so that we can see how Cabal is interacting with the files on our uh, system. Okay, so if we want to create a new project, we can call Cabal init. And when we do that, it is doing some stuff and then creates a cabal file. It not just creates this cabal file, but also a change log and a directory called app, which contains some Haskell code, in this case, just some hello world program. But the interesting stuff happens in mydemo.cabal. So this file contains metadata that Cabal needs in order to compile our program or our library. But also it contains other metadata like a one-line description or a longer description or a bug report URL, which would be needed if you want to upload a package to Hackage, for example. Okay, so we can delete those, but also something that is missing is the license. And actually, Cabal tells us that warning, unknown license type. Well, yes, because we didn't specify any license. But let's say we want to do that because we want to upload our code to GitHub or something like that. Then we can do this. So let me just, you know, delete uh, everything here and then create a new project. But this time, Cabal init minus L MIT. And this will now create a project with a correctly filled out MIT license. Isn't that nice? And also now we have uh, the metadata that tells us that there is a license text and somebody should take a look at that. Okay, then of course it also has the change log, but we won't interact with that for now. And the important thing, uh, the really important thing is that uh, we have a name for our project, which is the name of our directory, and we have a default version, which is 0 0.1. Of course, if we create different versions, then we have to update this version number all the time, uh, but we are also not doing that in this, um, in this uh, tutorial here. Okay, so... What we have here is the is really the meat of Cabal. This tells us how something has to be built. And in this case, we want to create an executable called MyDemo, uh, which um, has its main in 
main.hs. So in our main.hs file, there is the entry point for our program. If we have multiple, um, multiple modules which contain a main, then we have to, of course, um, use the correct one. And we will take a look at uh, an example uh, a bit later. Okay, so what else do we have here? Well, we have some build depends. In this case, we don't have any dependencies uh, except for the base, of course, uh, with some minimum uh, version. And we tell Cabal where the source directories are. So in this case, we only have one directory containing source files, which is the app. And then we also tell it what default language we want to use, but we also don't really care about that. So how would we build my demo? Well, we can do this by calling cabal build my demo. And then we do this and we're resolving some dependencies and it's compiling something. It's already linking it on Windows. That takes a bit of time. I don't know why, but yeah. And now we've built it. So no errors occurring. So this is a good sign, of course. And now we can run it. Basically, we do this by calling exec on my demo. And when we do this, hello, Haskell. Everything worked perfectly. Okay, good. So, of course, when you're doing changes to your program, right? So maybe we want to create a just a normal hello world, then you would always need to build an exec and build an exec. That's always what you're doing. So that is why there is a shortcut and that is cabal run and cabal run will do both things. It will compile and then execute. So let's take a look at that. It's linking again and hello world has been built. OK, so if we do this run again now, it first tells us that, hey, everything is up to date because nothing in the source has changed. And that's why we can just execute it again. OK, cool. Good. So that is how you can get a really basic program running with Cabal. But obviously, not every program is this simple. So maybe we want to have some library code. Library code in this case are just functions that we define in some module which are not in the main module. So how would you do that? Well, normally in a Haskell project, what you would do is you would create a new directory and call that source. And in that source, you now have new modules, which are your library modules. So in this case, I will add a module called lib and that's where I will create a new IO action, which uh, is called hello world. And <laughs> well, guess what it's doing? Um, I don't think that is that complicated to figure out. OK, so this is our hello world and this hello world should now be called in our main. So that's what we want to do. We want to import this, maybe even qualified and then call whoops and then call this lib dot hello world. OK. But my editor is already complaining. As you can see, everything is turning red. So what's going on here? Well, it, it tells me something about a uh, file does not exist or multi cradle or whatever. Of course, it depends on your editor if these uh, problems show up or not. But actually, there is a problem here There there is a reason for this warning. And let's just try to build this and see what the problem is. And as we can see, ta da, this doesn't work. Funnily enough, Cabal gives us the wrong reason why this doesn't work. It tells us that this module is a member of the hidden package libbyserv, which is not true. It is not a member of this package. Well, it is, but actually we are not uh, talking or referencing this package here. We are referencing this lib. The reason why Cabal just can't figure that out is because we told it that, hey, the source directories are only app. But this isn't true. So we now have to add the source, of course, because otherwise, well, it's not part of the source. And now we have to do another thing because here we have something commented out modules included in this executable other than main. And that is the important thing. We have to um, tell Cabal which modules exist in the executable, but are just um, not containing the main. 
right? So there is a main module in here, but the rest is library code. And those modules have to be uh, in this other modules um, option or field. Okay, and now if we try to run it, then it is resolving some dependencies and blah, 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 and ta-da. Uh, yeah, it's linking. Linking now, of course, takes longer because uh, we have two modules and ta-da, hello world worked. And this is the basic setup, the basic setup on how to create uh, an executable um, with Cabal. You have your library code and source and you have your main and app. And basically, you know, most of the time your main is doing nothing uh, but actually calling some IO action within your library, obviously. So we have now built a very easy executable. Now, the question is, well, what if we are not actually trying to build an executable, but some library for whatever purpose that we want to have. In this case, we don't even want to build an executable. We just want to have a library, but how would we do that? Well, in this case, we can tell Cabal that we are trying to build a library by telling it that we want to build a library. And the problem here is that there can only be a single library in a Cabal file. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. So what we have to do here is, of course, we have to tell it where uh, what kind of build dependencies we have, where the source files are, and what the default language is. So in this case, we only have source as our source um, source directories, obviously. But also we have to tell it another thing, and that is the actually important thing. Because if you have a library consisting of many, 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 many modules, you don't want to expose all of them. Maybe there are libraries that you simply don't want the end user to see or the end programmer to see. So that's why we have to tell Cabal what, uh, what modules are exposed. So in this case, we want to expose lib because we actually want to use it, right? We want to use our great hello world. Uh, and that's why we are telling Cabal that we want to expose this module. So now, how do we test that? Because we don't have a main anymore. Well, we can test it by going into GHCI and loading the library. And that can be done by calling cabal repl, of course, read eval print loop. And when we do that, then it's resolving dependencies and it's compiling some stuff and whatever. And here we see the big difference. It is compiling my demo 0100 lib. And that's the important thing because uh, if we go if we go uh, here where we actually compiled the executable, it compiled my demo 0100 exe my demo, and that's the difference because now we have a library compiled, and this is what we see here compiling lib. That is the library. So in here we have hello world. Great. So this is how uh, we can work with the library. Isn't that great? Okay, but now we have a problem in our Cabal file. Well, it's not really a problem, it's just ugly. Because as you can see here, the build depends and the default language is the same for both. Also, both need the source, right? But the problem is that build depends and default language are simply repeating themselves. And of course, we never want to repeat ourselves. We are, as programmers, we are lazy. So we can take a shortcut. That is called a common. And a common is basically, you know, those are fields that some other fields, like library and executable, have in common. So how do we make that? Well, we have to give this thing a name. I will call it um, common all because all of the other things like the libraries and executables have this in common so i call it common all and that's where i will now put in the build dependencies and the default language maybe even a ghc option because that is also something that you can do in cabal you can give some options to ghc in this case what i want to do is i just want to uh, you know supply the minus uh, warnings all uh, just so we can get you know some more warnings in here and then what we want to do is we want to 
import this. So we say import common all, and we also do this for our executable like this. Now we can delete the build depends and the default language. And let's just get out of GHC, uh, GHCI of course, and then run my demo again, just you know, running the executable again, seeing if the configuration worked because now the configuration have cha uh, has changed. So, you know, uh, but yeah, it actually worked because basically our configuration hasn't changed, uh, changed much. Of course, the file has changed, but the actual configuration hasn't except for the uh, GHC option here. Cabal is pretty smart when it comes to the GHC options. So for example, we don't really need a recompilation if we have different warning levels. Uh, of course, that would be nice in order to see different warnings, but the whole project had been compiled with minus W, the small w, and that supersedes the w all because it has more warnings than w all. But what if we were changing our optimization level? In this case, because uh, before we compiled this with optimization level one, um, now we have to recompile everything because of course the optimization has changed. So we have to recompile it and Cabal takes note of that. And when compiling, it actually tells us, hey, yeah, I'm compiling lib and main because the optimization flags changed. Very interesting. Okay, so now we have a cabal file and it has, you know, some stuff in it. Okay, that's that's all fine. That's that's all nice. But how do we know that we didn't make a huge mistake here? So we can check that by calling cabal check. And that now will check our cabal file if everything is in order. And of course, <laughs> it's not. Who would have guessed? So it's actually giving us some recommendations. We have no category field here. We have no synopsis, no description. All of that stuff is missing. So that is something uh, that also Cabal will tell us that Hackage, for example, would reject this package because some metadata is missing. But also it gives us a, well, quite nice tip. And that is that uh, minus O2 is actually not really needed because most of the time it doesn't give you that much of an of a benefit, uh, but just increases compilation times, especially for bigger libraries. So that's actually why we will uh, delete this optimization level again. But of course, if you want to go fast, then you might want to add it. Okay, of course, we will not fix all the problems with our cabal file because we do not want to put this on hackage what we're doing here. So that is all fine. So no critical errors are happening here. And that's the important thing. So let's take a look at how to create different executables in the same project because maybe we want to do that. Maybe we want to have some debug version of our program and then the normal version. So how do we do that? Well, of course, if we want to create a new executable, we can do that by simply let, let me just, you know, delete the language extensions. Of course, right? There are extensions. That's something to take a note of. If you want to use language extensions, they go here, but we don't want to use them right now. And maybe this comment is also not needed now. OK, so let's create a second executable. This executable will be called my demo two. And of course, it has all the same properties. It has the same common all. It has the same other libraries and the same source directories. But now the main is should be different because now we want to have another main module. We will call this another. And of course, I will call this another. And this is where I will have a main which does something else. It will tell me I am another main. OK, and of course, in our cabal file, we now have to say, OK, this is another and that's fine. By the way, and that's the important thing, we don't have to uh, have another in the other modules here in our my demo, because, of course, another is simply ignored if the main is in main.hs. That's why it doesn't show up in the other modules. Same goes for other modules with the actual main here. It's not one of the other modules because it's simply ignored. It's simply not part of this executable. But OK, let's uh, let's do this. Let's uh, call cabal run my demo two. And let's see what's happening. OK, 
It's compiling. Okay, and we have an error. Okay, so what's happening? The interesting thing is that another compiled and lib compiled too. So it's not a compilation problem, but it tells us there is no main module. Huh? And that might be a head scratcher. That might be something that you just, you know, you're really surprised because, hey, isn't this the main module? Because this has main in it. No. It is convention in Haskell that the module has to be called main, even if the file isn't called that. So now when you do that, it's actually compiling and linking. Okay. And it is working. I am another main. Great. But maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you're saying, no, this is this is not good because I want to call my module how I call my file. I don't want to do this. So in this case, you can actually have a workaround. This workaround is to add a GHC option, which now tells um, GHC what the main module is. So don't confuse this main is with this main is. There are <laughs> two different main ises basically. So yeah, this is a bit strange, but this is a workaround you could use in order to do this. So now we can see that uh, it is compiling and linking. And well, we're waiting. It worked. I am another main, even though another is actually called another. But well, again, here we are just telling GHC, uh, GHC, hey, please take a note that the main actually is the another module. Okay, so now we have seen how we can have multiple executables in our program. That's all fine, but Cabal's job is actually to resolve dependencies. And that is something that we have not really seen. What we have seen is that, yes, that we are depending on base, but that is something trivial. Let's take a not so trivial example. Maybe let's say that in our library, we want to have a dependency on control.deepsec. What DeepSec does, I've showed in another video. And we are not using this in a, in a you know, really uh, useful uh, case, but I just want to add it so that we have some dependency. And my editor actually warns me that, hey, this cannot be loaded because it's part of a hidden package. Maybe you want to add this to your build dependencies. And yes, actually, that is correct. But I just want to show you what would happen if I'm trying to run my demo um, without doing that. So what would happen, what you might see if you don't have this editor integration is this. You cannot load this module because it's member of a hidden package. Perhaps you need to add DeepSec, blah, 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 blah. And that is actually true. We need to add it to our Cabal file. But how do we do that? Well, of course, we have built dependencies in our Cabal file. So we have this base here which is one dependency, but now we want to tell it that, hey, actually we also need DeepSec and actually it needs to have a version greater than 1.440 because, you know, that can can uh, tell us that the function that we actually need is within this, uh, this version or within this module. Of course, what you can also do is do something like this and tell it that you need an exact version. You need this deep sec, not some other deep sec. And this is the really cool thing about Cabal, because what you can now do is you can basically specify dependencies down to like the minor versions and telling it, no, I actually don't want 1.42. I want 1.41 something else. Right. Uh, and you can get really specific uh, with it. Of course, for our use case, that just isn't useful. Right. We can just uh, use this um, uh, greater equals, meaning some version greater than uh, this version. And now let's see if it works. So let's run this again and see what Cabal does. And it actually resolves the dependencies. Of course, DeepSec is already within, you know, the normal Haskell installation. So nothing has to be downloaded or anything. Uh, but yes, that is actually what needed to be done, right? It told us that, hey, the library changed. Yeah, because we now have a dependency in there and it still works. We are still printing Hello World. Okay. So this is how we can handle dependencies. The cool thing is that not just stuff that is already in your installation can be a dependency. 
Also, stuff that is on Hackage can be a dependency and Cabal will simply download it for you and build it and, you know, just provide everything for you. You don't need to do anything. And that is a really cool thing. So for our last example, what we actually want to make is a test suit. We want to create a test suit for our library, which will use quick check. And that's why we are just, you know, swiftly adding this um, quick check, which needs to be, you know, written in camel case. That's just how quick check is called. And what we actually want to have is some version uh, greater than version two. And we want to use quick check in order to build a test suit. What quick check is and how it works, I've shown in another video. So this isn't really important. It's really about the, the how the build dependencies work. Okay, so let's first in our library, let's maybe get rid of DeepSec. We don't really need DeepSec here and we don't actually need this hello world. What I want to do is I want to create a function called plus, which simply is the addition. Um, yeah, that, that's already everything. I just want to create a very, very, very simple, um, a, a very simple function that can be checked for correctness. Okay, so I want to create a test suit. And actually, there is a standard way of doing that in Cabal. But before we can do that, we need to add some other dependencies. What needs to be added is Cabal test uh, quick check in version 0.1 or actually a version greater than 0.1 and then this is just you know otherwise it wouldn't work we also need to add cabal itself um, as a build dependency here which uh, in this case is the version 3.0.1.0 that should be the correct one yes and actually we can have a greater equals here too so now we need these two in order to have quick check support for the built-in test suits that exist in Cabal. So how do you create a test suit? Well, what you do is in your Cabal file, you will create a test suit, which is written like this. Now, you might wonder, hey, why is it capitalized? Well, that's just how it is. And we also have to give this test suit a name. So in this case, I will call it my tests. Just, you know, you can call it something else, but I'm calling it that. So, um, of course, we can import again. Uh, and in this case, our common all is what we are importing. But now we have to tell it what kind of type of test we want to do. And in this case, there, there are different ones, but we want to use detailed 0.9. Now, this is a bit weird, but just trust me, it, it works in the end. Okay, so let's add our source tiers again, which in this case, we want to uh, test um, the library. So we add source, but we will also, um, well, will we add it? No, we will add uh, another uh, directory called test. And that is something that we now will uh, create. So I'll just call this test. You can also call it something else. I'm not sure what the what the um, default way of naming your test suit is, but I will just call it test. And now, uh, because in here we have a test module, um, we can now reference this module. So we can say there is a test module, which is called test. Okay. And then, of course, because we have the library, it is part of the other modules, right? Never forget that you have to add the other modules that are dependent on whatever you're trying to build. In this case, we're trying to build a test suit and we want to test the library. So it is dependent. So how do you write a test suit? So in this case, we need a module how that is called is irrelevant, but it needs to export something called tests. And who would have guessed tests will be a list of tests that have to be satisfied in order for this test suit to work. In order to do this, we need to import a distribution. Well, this will be this will be quite challenging now. Distribution test suit quick check. Yeah, it, it is a bit strange, but that's what we need to uh, what we need to import here. And then also what we need to import and I will do this qualified is our library, of course, because that's what we want to test. 
Ah, uh, whoops. Okay, like this. And now we need to create the list of tests. So tests is of type IO test. And test is a data type that this distribution test suit quick check simply gives us. Okay, in here we can simply return a list of tests and this list, list of tests uh, has some test properties in it which contain a string and some property. And the string simply gives a name to that property that we want to test. So in this case what we want to test is that lib plus is the addition, right? The both have to be equivalent and then we can have some property that we want to test. And now we have to define this, uh, define this property. So some property, of course, for two integers, for example, lib dot plus a b should be equal to a plus b, right? And this this um, type inference has worked correctly. So this is the property that we want to check, right? If you're unsure what I'm doing here, you should uh, watch my video and quick check where I demonstrate how to check certain properties in your code, uh, because that's essentially what we're doing here. And also I want to add test and test property here so the export list is correct. Okay, but now we have test and this module now exports this tests list, this uh, IO uh, of a list of tests. And now Cabal is capable with the dependencies that we have to test this. So how do we do it? Well, we go Cabal test my tests. And now it's of course resolving dependencies, it's doing some compilation, blah blah blah, all of that uh, kind of stuff. And this will probably take a while because now it has to, it of course has to, you know, compile a bit more than just our program, but it actually tells us that, hey, the test suit, my tests, is running and then it actually passes. Now we have a log file and we can take a look at that and this log file uh, basically tells us what kind of test cases have passed and we see here lib plus is the addition has passed. So our, our test here, our sum property holds true. Great. But now we want to do a second thing and that is create a property that always fails. Why do we want to create that? Well, I simply want to create that to highlight uh, what happens if a property fails. So in this case, we say test property um, always fails is simply false. And that's already everything that you need. Of course, false will always be false and this should always fail. So if we now do this again and uh, we compile the test again, it's of course testing and we wait for it to link and we see that lib plus is the addition passed but always fails failed after one test and of course in our log we can actually see this so we see here that the whole test suit has failed because always fails has failed after exactly one test. Well, of course, that isn't so surprising, right? But that is just something uh, to take a note of. Okay, but that is actually everything. What we have now seen in project management with Cabal is how to not only create an executable, right? We have seen how to create an executable. We have seen how to create multiple executables, maybe even with different options. So for example, what we could do is create a second my demo, right? With the same stuff, but then maybe with a higher optimization level or something like that. So we have seen how to do that. We have seen how we can actually build the library just itself, right? There can only be one library in Cabal, but that's just, you know, how it is. And we have seen how to define a test suit, not just, you know, a, a simple test suit that has some, um, you know, that tests some asserts or something. No, an actual quick check test suit. And of course, we have also seen how we can handle dependencies. And that, of course, is the important thing. If you want to use stuff, you know, that is on Hackage, you need to uh, basically import it here in your build dependencies in your Cabal file. 
Right. And that is everything. If there are any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Yet, please note that I cannot, you know, be the IT tech support here. So if you're having problems installing something or getting something to run, you should really Google stuff first because guess how I found stuff out. So if uh, if I want to find out how, for example, to add quick check to my test suit, I of course have to Google that. And guess what? It came up with exactly these dependencies here. So lastly, I want to talk about um, a certain thing called Cabal Hell. Because Cabal in itself is fine, but it had some problems in its earlier versions. The problem was that when you have different dependencies like this, it would store them globally. This meant that if you have two different quick checks, for example, on your system, it would store them in the same place. Of course, this isn't correct. This leads to errors, uh, very harsh errors, to be honest. And this dependency hell is called the Cabal hell because Cabal just didn't really manage it correctly. Cabal does that now, so the Cabal hell really isn't uh, part of Cabal anymore. Yet, please be aware that every different version of, for example, QuickCheck that you need to install takes up space. So basically, if you have three different QuickChecks in your projects, then you will have three different QuickChecks on your system. There is nothing shared, those are separate. Yeah. But that's everything. In the next video, we will take a look at Stack, which is another build system that sort of intertwines with Cabal in order to provide even more features, especially when it comes to profiling. Okay, but that is everything. Thanks for watching.